Okay, so this is the next video in a series of ever decreasing length, we hope. Um, we've got our law of figure 255a here again. Um, previously, we analyzed what we perceived uh, from uh, the results. Uh, today, we're just going to go ahead here and examine uh, or search out the inevitable problems and uh, figure out how to fix them. Uh, one good way to do this is with the, again, this is from previous video, should be, uh, it was available or we looked at it. Um, one thing that often gives away errors uh, in, for example, the contacts is the unexpected movements. Um, so a good way to see that is to go to adjusted times 5 and look for points of high movement or high stress. Um, there might be an error uh, caused by the way that we've chosen to do something. You can see here that uh, displacement may help. Again, you can pull it, let's see, let's pull it over here. You can pull it down for a, a more closer view. Looking for unexpected shifts. Uh, I saw one previously, so I don't know what I'm looking for here. It's kind of in here. Let's hide our. Oh, let's turn off our slice plate. Um, if we remember back to our previous uh, week, two weeks ago in this course, where we had a uh, thread being yanked by a nut, um, we've it looks like we've got the same sort of problem here, but it's unrealistic. It looks like the undersurface of this uh, rod end here is actually pulling up the surface of the uh, plate. This is not correct, of course. The plate shouldn't be lifted by the thread. It should only be pushed in. So it looks like we've got a problem with the contact here. Um, and also, while we're at it, I'll just hide the plate here. See here that yeah, we can in fact see some dislocation. So again, this is similar to two weeks ago where we had the, we modeled a threaded fastener, on the, not the bolt, um, and not the screw, sorry. And we had that uh, discontinuity where the nut came away from the, or where the thread started disengaging between the nut and the, sh and the threaded part of the fastener of the screw. Got the same problem here. So probably interested in a better uh, resolution in this area. Probably the same on the back as well. So again, we can see discontinuities happening here inside. So I propose that we add two things. We, we fix our uh, contact and we introduce a, a increasing mesh, our local mesh control. So finish our results here. This will not pull us out of simulation, it will just stop us from seeing uh, the results. And back to the kind of design of the simulation. So again, let's just go through this methodically. This is our front, again, if we lost our orientation, or not the front of the part, but the high stress area, we had it. We, if you watched previous videos, we turned the threads so that we were facing the worst direction. So we've got this point of interest here. I'm going to add local mesh control to a feature. Now, local mesh control can be applied to an edge or a face. The problem with the edge here is it goes all the way down the part. That's not going to be useful. Um, if you watch previous videos as well, again, you would have seen how long the meshing took even then. So what I'd like to be able to do here is add local mesh control that's under, I'm not going to, magnify the entire part. What about this face? It's not bad, but it's it's going to add extra mesh in parts that we're not really interested in. I'm actually going to... Although it might not be so bad, we have a surface emerging in here. Even It's in the low stress region of the bending. It's kind of, no, it's not too bad. So if we pick this whole top face here, underside face, 
and we can probably get quite a bit of what we want by just doing a local mesh control there. Um, I think it's under manage, local mesh control. Now what it does is it starts showing us the size that it's using right now, um, the default size in a way. So these green dots will kind of, it's kind of a preview of the size of the mesh that it's going to start. But this is not taken into account. It's sort of an iterative attempt to mesh the part, especially these helical threads being quite hard. If we highlight one piece that we're interested in here, this underface, and we start dragging the cursor around, we should see it start to tighten up. Now, it says fine is 1.63 millimeters. It's tempting to type this in here. It's on a circle, so there's pies involved, so it's not really a big deal. Um, I'm going to go with its um, preference. I'm not going to type in a number like, say, 1 to be exact. It's going to end up moving the mesh around anyway to suit the shape. And we've got quite a tight mesh. It's probably you know, like a quarter of the size of the normal mesh. The mesh goes out of date. I'm going to ask it to mesh again. And again, just to, re just to reiterate or remember what we're looking at, we're looking at a very rough mesh. So in our settings, we've asked it to change its aspect ratio and allow a quite small 10% uh, polygon. So let's remesh. This will take quite some time. So. And while it works, um, I'm going to talk about what the next step is here. Um, that if you remember just a few minutes ago in the video, we we're looking at the uh, a natural movement uh, in the part uh, where the plate was attaching or touching uh, the, f the rod end here. So what I'm going to do next is uh, adjust the contacts. One contact was working fine, that was the, the uh, bonded. If we have it uh, threaded tightly, uh, it's essential. Uh, it's not perfectly bonded, but it's roughly bonded. And again, that could be a point of issue for the next iteration. But for this iteration of the, of the simulation, we're just going to leave uh, the bonded uh, Again, because it's probably quite tight, again, there's no preload in this discussion, uh, but we're going to be assuming that it's tight enough that it won't shift. Waiting for the mesh. And again, to reiterate again, uh, as we previously said, uh, long meshing usually means long solve time. Well, previously, we talked about this. I decided to put the solve onto the cloud. Uh, again, results may stay open for a moment. You can get those results back uh, if you wish. We see a tighter mesh here. Uh, what it's done, it's kind of interesting. It's Kind of caused a increased or improved, you know, however you want to think of it, uh, resolution all the way around, except for this small gap here in between. Uh, we would keep an eye on that to see what effect that has. And it's not a bad mesh as far as I can see. Uh, again, we could do the same down here, but we won't because uh, it's very low stress down there at the bottom. So where the thread runs out, we're not really that interested. So we're going to say that's our acceptable mesh. Let's turn on the plate. Now, keep in mind, we haven't put a local mesh control on the plate. Uh, why? Again, we could, uh, and maybe in the next iteration I will, but I'm not mostly interested in the rod end. Uh, so if it doesn't match across perfectly, that's not perfect, of course, but Maybe not that bad. It's we're trying to narrow in on our final answer. So again, meshing and running the simulations is an iterative process in the simulation. Uh, you need to do it multiple times to make sure that you are actually narrowing in on a valid answer. Uh, again, eventually we would make this thing. So always keep in mind we're aiming at a physical prototype. 
this is informing our prototype and making sure that we don't waste machining time. Next, back to contacts. Uh, strange the way Fusion handles it, a little bit strange anyway, I find uh, the best, it doesn't show you a list of contacts, you have to edit the contact. Then you get the list. Just gonna shrink this down a bit here. Got a tiny window running for the view for the video. Okay, so let's see which one's which. Just click it. That's our threads. Now let's make sure we haven't made any major errors here. It's the top of the thread. So as we snug it up, it's gonna come against the top of the thread. That makes sense. There's no outside edges because we're not touching. It doesn't look that bad. Okay, on to two. We realize this is where our problem is because that's not quite right. Bonded is not, it's not glued down. Right, so as this bends over, it should be allowed to separate. Let's keep it pen penetration type symmetric. It looks for two ways for it to separate. Uh, I've been told that this is best. And we've got quite a high friction, so I'm gonna decide I'm gonna try and put a friction mode in here. Now, what do I put in here? So I can what's this little thing here? Well, let's just stop working. Uh, we can do maximum activation distance. Uh, it's probably if we notice maximum turns that off. So let's go with that. Advanced options. Let's have a little look here first. Oh nice. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. We're gonna leave that for now. And that'll be on our, if we keep going, that'll be another uh, iteration. But what about this static friction? Let's see if something happens here. Um, just tells us to go to the website. I'm not going to try and open the website. Let's just lock this on here. So the friction will be quite high, I would say. That's not quite right. Contact. So one is full bonded, more or less. I'm gonna say it can slide slightly, 0.9, sure. Now we see two things, bonded separation. You can also create a contact set in here if we wanna do it manually. Say okay. Nothing happens. It doesn't really come into effect until the simulation starts running. That's how I would set up for another run at this. Uh, again, this if we were going to be quite keen about this thing, there would be multiple runs. Uh, I may come back, make a short video of the results. No, I'm not going to make you watch the thing do nothing for half an hour and hour. Um, but the key thing here is next, it's going to be questions, more questions about that. Is that uh, coefficient of friction I just picked, 0.9, reasonable? Um, do we also have problems with the size of this plate and the way it's controlled? So we have, for example, constraints, which are yeah, maybe good, maybe not. Keep in mind what it's set up. There's a locked corner and a frictionless face. This is realistic. Uh, should it be bigger? Um, contacts. The Sorry, the contacts. The contact between the threads uh, may or may not be bonded. So we might want to start having a rough uh, face there that's kind of a, a very high degree of friction. So now I'll leave that to the next uh, iteration. Uh, we've dealt with some local mesh, but do we need to put it to the other side to the plate as well to match its uh, accuracy across the mesh? These are all questions that I do sequentially. I don't do them all at once because I like to get a feel for if I'm going the right way or not. So one step at a time. So for now, solve. Again, I'm definitely going to go in the cloud. I have infinite cloud credits and right now it's Friday morning mountain time so it might not be too busy on the west side of the continent. So we'll just let it go uh, and see how it goes. I'm going to press solve and study. You'll notice it goes to a green check, a little check up here. It has saved the part, so it's made a new uh, milestone, and goes ahead to send the file data up. You can close this if you wish. 
uh, inside the data panel, you'll see simulation progress and a little pop back out button. Um, you can see save because of simulation, simulation. And all the way through from the step. Okay, so the milestones are being automatically generated here. Perfect. We'll leave it as is. Uh, just hide some stuff and maybe another video on the results. Thanks for watching. Over to you.